You were telling me in the ad break the pound rebound, really thanks to the Bank of England. But what a wild week. At what point can the Trust government restore confidence here, given the fact that, as we heard, Prime Minister Trust is not backing down here on her economic policies? Well, I'd say they have a 10 or 12 day window, thanks to the Bank of England, who have stepped in and stabilised things and, and shored up the pound. But that intervention is not going to go on indefinitely. And therefore, I think the the markets, the British public, just about everyone internationally will be looking to Prime Minister Truss uh, and the Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng to walk back from the uh, financial package, the fiscal package that they introduced the other Friday. I mean, it was a self-inflicted fiscal fiasco, as we've uh, seen since. It's a product, in my view, of very sh shallow, careless, Trumpian thinking. Um, it uh, certainly took the markets by surprise, who reacted uh, in, a, in a completely predictable way. If the government had chosen to ask anyone in the first place what would be the consequences, they didn't. They just forged ahead, thinking they knew everything, without asking the Office of Budget Responsibility, uh, the senior civil servants, who, yeah. of course, they fired on the first day uh, when she took over. Look. We all want uh, a, a more economic growth in Britain. We all want more productivity growth. We all want these things. But you're not going to achieve this, these things, by uh, a shed load of unfunded tax cuts and deregulatory measures which nobody seems able to specify. What does Labour do now, though? Because you've said Keir Starmer can't sit back. So in your view and putting on your Labour hat, what should happen from the opposition? Well, putting on a Labour hat, I would say that the, uh, the party, Keir Starmer, the leader, uh, has got to uh, give a proper critique of what the government has done and provide an alternative uh, path uh, to achieving the economic growth that we all want. Now, that's not going to be miracled out of thin air by a shed load of tax cuts unfunded for already very well-off uh, people. I mean, quite apart from the inequity uh, of that, and it's very striking to me how very many people in the financial sector, you know, in the city, uh, have objected strongly to this government's measures on those grounds, that they will just create, you know, gross and further inequalities in society, you know, which will produce their own political backlash uh, in time. What we need to do is use the available resources and slack we have in Britain to invest in the productive economy and the supply side of the economy. Yeah. We have a brilliant science and technology base in Britain. We've got to convert that into new businesses and new industries. We've got very exciting, profound transitions taking place climate transition, energy, digital, artificial intelligence, all those are going to give rise to new industrial opportunities. What we've got to see in Britain is a partnership between the private sector, private capital and business and the government uh, to invest in those industries in the future yeah. so that we can get on a sustainable growth path rather than the fiasco that, we've cur that we're currently seeing. When we look at the global picture, of course, what's happening in the UK playing heavily into the already downturn that we're seeing in the global economy. But one of the Fed presidents was saying, look, this shouldn't stop the Fed from aggressive, aggressively tightening. What sort of tightrope are government officials and central banks kind of walking now when you have these high inflationary pressures? Well, they are because uh, walking a tightrope because we're heading into a recessionary period, which is uh, a result of the inflation that we fear has become baked into uh, our, our economies, but also because of the energy price shock uh, triggered uh, by uh, Putin's illegal invasion uh, of Ukraine. Now, I support what the British government has done, you know, to make it easier possible for families in Britain to get through the winter uh, and to reduce the impact of that energy price shock uh, and, to, and to help them uh, financially at a time of, you know, real extreme stress. But it's in light of those international conditions that makes the British government's thinking behind its uh, other fiscal uh, package announced uh, last Friday so nonsensical. You know, at a time of international peril, 
and instability. Yeah. You know, we need sustainable policies, uh, not this sort of, uh, you know, shot in the dark. Uh, uh, sort of attempt to sort of through some sort of big bang to trigger growth, which has not done any such thing. All it's done is trigger an explosion in borrowing costs yeah. for government, for businesses and individual householders. On the trade front, when do we see an easing in the glo global supply chain and does that take the end of the war in Ukraine and China's economy really powering back? Well, a combination of both the pandemic and now the war in Ukraine uh, has proved very disruptive. Uh, to supply chains. Another reason why governments have got to tread carefully uh, and uh, avoid the sorts of policy collisions between fiscal and monetary policies that we've seen uh, happen uh, in, in Britain. Um, we've got to do everything we can to stabilize the international trade system. This is not a time to create fresh ruptures, to create fresh cold walls between the United States uh, and, uh, and China. Uh, we've got to make sure uh, that, yes, you know, we are resilient uh, in Europe and the United States, but the way to be more resilient is to plan carefully, yeah. you know, w w where we get our supply and how we source our inputs yeah. uh, to our economies from, not throw everything up in the air uh, and start creating a sort of, you know, histrionic set of... Uh, outbursts, either in relation to our domestic fiscal policies or, quite frankly, our international trade policies uh, and the geopolitics that governs that relationship between East and West in the world.